Oh, so like, <laughs> I'm just trying to mind my own business and I think I've maybe created a bit of a uh, monster with this uh, God phone thing because <laughs> I've got people lining up left, right and centre. It'll be because most of them are asleep. <laughs> It'll be because most of them are asleep. Or at school daydreaming or at work daydreaming, depending on... Or they're, you know, in the zone while they're doing the artwork or something. <laughs> Whoever it is they are now. But, um... Oh my god, I can't believe I'm going to say this. But why not? I've already had Marilyn Monroe, so... Um, <clears throat> I'm really nervous saying this, but I have got Selena here, and she's playing the music in my head. Um, and she's got a message that she wants to give to her father and her brothers, her family, obviously, but... Her father and her brothers especially because she said that um, she wanted to thank them for making her feel so safe the whole time she was um, out on the road. She said that she didn't always show it at times, but she was really nervous because she was afraid of letting people down because she didn't realise when she began, she didn't realise when she began how much of an influence she was going to have in the Latina community. She had no idea when she started that she was going to end up being um, an icon for Mexico and um, the Latino music industry. She said she thought that her biggest achievement was... Um, making it in America but her biggest achievement is now what she has managed to achieve for Mexico and for the Latino community um, in her passing. She's kind of shocked that she's been made an icon. She said if I had have known the impact I was going to make I would have shown off a lot sooner. She said that she, her biggest fear, the reason why she used to have little secret panic attacks is because she was afraid of letting people down. She didn't want to let her heritage down. She didn't want to let her people down. She wanted to show the world the best of what Mexico had to offer so that they would see that there were beautiful things that the Mexican people and the Latino community were able to offer America and the rest of the world and that they were just as good as everybody else. If not better, she said. And she said that it's her father that instilled that pride in her, it's her father that instilled that work ethic in her and the support that she got from her brothers and her friends and her community and that is what kept her getting on stage every day because at the end of the day she didn't do it for anybody else but them for Mexican pride for Latino pride and she said that she wasn't afraid when she died she wants people to know she wasn't afraid she said that even before she took her last breath all she saw was light and she went to God God took me by the hand she said And she said, don't ever stop playing your music. And she said, to the man that I love, <laughs> know that every time I close my eyes and go to sleep as the person I am now, I'm always dreaming of you. That's where we meet up, she said. Um, she said that she wants people to know 
that the Latino community is more than how they're being represented on the media, through the media. She said, <laughs> she's making me emotional. She said, I want my words to be everybody's sip of coffee in the morning. <laughs> it's pretty beautiful. Sorry, I apologise. Gosh, she's a perfectionist. She has to have everything like... Poof, poof, poof. She said, let my words... Be your morning coffee. Be like morning coffee in the morning. Oh, I'm getting yelled at now. She's made me emotional. Now I'm getting yelled at because I'm getting her words wrong. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> She's laughing though because she's she's made me nervous. Let my words be like a sip of morning coffee. Because um, in my defense, she is kind of speaking Spanish and I'm having to interpret it in the frequency. And like she's got a really thick accent and I'm trying really hard to understand what she's saying while converting Spanish into English. She said it will help me with the Dragonarium, but... <laughs> Not yelling at me. <laughs> I'm not going to learn fast to being yelled at. <laughs> she, she's a perfectionist. She's like, she was like, man, when we used to rehearse for her, our routine, she said I'd make them do it over and over and over and over and over. She said it had to be perfect. And that's, she hasn't changed. <laughs> she cracks the whip. She said, when we went out on stage, we were representing the heartbeat of the Latino community and I didn't want I didn't want the heart to stop beating. So everything had to be like a heartbeat. It had to be like, you know, perfect rhythm, perfect timing because everything they did had a greater meaning and a greater purpose and a um, wider reaching um, effect. And she was aware of that. That's why everything had to be perfect. She says she got that from her papa. <laughs> she said, I knew I was the apple of his eye. <laughs> And she said, she's sorry you you had to release her. This is, she's saying this to her dad. She, I'm sorry you had to release me. But I'm like a balloon. I was born to fly. She wasn't, she wasn't born to stay in one place. She was meant to be let go of so, so that she could soar above the world and, you know, become a star. She's a star now. She's the epitome of a true star. And she wants everyone to embrace each other. It's not about skin colour, it's about unity. And coming together to represent the best of 
what our God has to offer. That's what she's saying. So, I just, I had to pass that on because um, <laughs> she slightly scares me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She doesn't scare me, but she's not someone you say no to. <laughs> she's hard to say no to. She knows how to work a room. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought I'd pass that on.